Hey everybody, this is your brother, Narda Michael Walden. Welcome to All In, my podcast where we break down music, life, and love, interviews, and conversations. Let's get into it. Where do broken hearts go? Can they find their way home? Back to the open arms of a love that's waiting there. And if somebody loves you, yeah, won't they always love you? I look in your eyes and I know that you're still there for me. Love to you, Frank. God bless you, brother. I mean, thank you and thank you. And what's, what's with the hat? First, the hat. <laughs> oh, this is my high school um, drumming <laughs> hat. Oh, so that's I'm so cool. An honor talking to you today. Where did you go to high school? Plainwell High School in Michigan. Plainwell, Michigan. In Michigan. Yeah. Ah, I didn't know. I thought you were from the West Coast. No, no. I, I came out here in... Um, 78, I think it is. Yeah. But I was, when, uh, I was, that was from, when I was a freshman at USC. Okay. Okay. Trying to figure out what the hell I was going to do with my life. That's I right. was at, being a history major. I, oh, <laughs> you know. you, man. Yeah, because bless it's you. funny because you, know, you can go to USC on a Frank Wildhorn scholarship for the music department. But in 1978, the music department of SC was only a classical thing they didn't have anything else it was just a you know classical department so i i didn't do that at that time <laughs> so, wow. so it's so pretty frank, ironic i want to just make 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 clear that people re- recognize that you have composed this song called where the broken hearts go uh that whitney houston sang i produced it uh clive yes, davis did. chose it and it was um some controversy because when she first heard it she she didn't connect and mm-hmm. then i i knew that and so then when she came to this room where I'm sitting right now, I took the liberty of recutting it for her, putting the background vocals, a new vocal for her that she would really kind of be able to kind of, I made it a little more on the soul side. So right. when I played it for her and she goes, oh, now I get it. Okay. I said, thank God. okay, okay, this is well, important that's because what I have to if thank you, you for. bring your heart to it, it'll be a smash for you. And she right. did. We had to lower all the lights down, make it really blue light. Uh-huh. And a candle, because for her at that time to have the thinking of her heart being broken wasn't a reality yet. yet. That would be right. the third album. This is now the second album. Yes. So we had to kind of trick her mind to feel what it would be like to be that lonely and that broke down. Right. She right. did. She did. Took, uh, her, took her a minute to get there, but when she got there, is the record you're hearing? Well, it changed my life, Thada, uh, because that record. You know, it bought it literally bought me the freedom to spread my wings and get into theater a little bit. You know, it took care of the family for a while. And, you know, in theater, the financial reward of theater is on the back end, not the front end. So you have to be in an okay place to spend the time to develop theater. And uh, the success of that song did that. So I, I thank you a million times over and a million times after that, sir. Thank you so much. I'm so happy we could do that. And then, and then it made history. It became seventh number one in a row. Yes. Only was it number one. It was her seventh number one in a row. This is really significant because that record beat the Beatles record of, in a, of, of succession of number ones. So that was right. mind-blowing for Whitney that a song she almost didn't record. Right, right, right. To be, the, to be the, 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 the seventh number one to break the all-time records. So I have to just right. say that to you. Congrats. Well, to you. God, God bless. And, uh, you know, I had an enormous effect on my life and my family. And uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. So yeah. I, can't, I can't wait to, to be in the same place and give you a hug. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm here in California, um, San Rafael, California. You're out this way. But I want to mm-hmm. meet with you, too, because uh, I'm really on the same psychic wave as you are. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> oh. right. Hey, Nada, I'm yes. going to... 
people are coming into this rehearsal room to sing. So I have to leave this rehearsal room and go someplace else quiet for a second. So uh, you can just follow me wherever I go. Sure, I will. I don't know where I'm going, but I'll go somewhere. <laughs> We're rehearsing my new Broadway show as we speak. And um, uh, so we've taken over the floor, a floor of 42nd Street Studios here. And so that's where I am. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm going to go. I don't know where I'm going to go. Oh, there's a pantry. What you're working on is one of my favorite movies because it, 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 it honors Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus. The song of Bernadette, correct? It, of course, sure it does. And, you know, the story of this thing is, first of all, the facts of the story are amazing because she is a saint because, you know, so many people were healed by the water in Lourdes, France, that the church, uh, you know, had a, and they named her a saint. So she actually is Saint Bernadette. But I don't know you know the story of how it came into being. It's amazing. You want to hear the story? Yes. In fact, I want to remind you, I went there. I went to Lourdes. That's how much oh. a fan I am. And oh, my I God. I visited all of it, you know, I put the water and I take holy water every day on my face just to be blessed by it. Oh my God! Then yeah, I'm, you, no, I'm you a have fan. such I'm a, a fan, man. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> oh, that, but you, it's it's amazing because there was this guy, Franz Herzl, who's a Jewish writer, uh, and he was escaping the Nazis in the forties, and he ended up in Lords. And this family who protected him and his family told them the story of Bernadette, and he basically said to God, "If I ever get out of here." I'm going to sing the song of Bernadette. And he got out and he ended up Hollywood. He literally ended up in Hollywood. And so he wrote the book and 20th Century Fox optioned the book. And then they found this 16 year old girl that was totally unknown named Jennifer Jones, who won the Academy Award playing the part. And then now we're going to do this musical. So the, the karma feels really good. In the world today, which is so fragile and so screwed up in so many ways, to have a show like this where people can leave the theater maybe believing in something and maybe having a little faith, that's a good thing, you know? And as an artist, you know, I, just to be given the opportunity to do that, I feel very fortunate. But I'm really, really taken that you have the heart and the courage to tell this story because this story is a very courageous story. I mean, I'm very taken by Bernadette, who was told, don't go there again, don't go down to the grotto, you know what I mean? And, and in particular... Well, they want to put her away. Yeah, exactly. But then I Mother Mary, on one of the last days, asked her to go toward the little water area and mud on her face or something mud on her face yes. Yes. you know and then the, the people were like, like she was like a, like a laughing stock in front of everyone yes. putting mud on her face people thought she was a nut but, well you're absolutely right but sometimes it takes that kind of courage and you know that's why we have a song called i have a voice that i think is going to become a pretty big song about you know this small if you have a voice and you tell the truth that, you know, you could have some power. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. Now that I know you and now that we are connected, please, please be my guest on opening night on Broadway, please. Okay. But, you know, people need, need to know this, that then when she put the mud on her face, Frank, people were laughing at her. But yes. out of that little area, the water sprang forth, and that yes. became the healing water of Lourdes. Yes. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal, the story. There was a stone cutter who worked there and he was a blind man. I forgot his name. And he was one of the first people. He was there with his son when the water came. And what can I tell you? It just cured him. He could see. And you know, the scientists couldn't figure it out, but that's what happened. And that was, he was the first uh, miracle they, they quote all the time. Fantastic. God bless you for this, man. It's really, really wonderful work. And you're, you're going to be blessed by this big time. Uh, I have some. Mm -hmm. So you asked me a minute ago, you asked me about Stacey Latizaw, because that Stacey was the Lattizaw. first time I came into um, a, your acquaintance, and it was actually the president of Cotillion Records who brought this song to my attention.
Henry Elm is his name. Henry Elm was the great, great leader of Cotillion Records who discovered Stacy. And I knew that he needed a hit for Stacy. She was 11 and they've been poking around trying to find, you know, a sound for her. Um, and I wanted to be a producer at the time. So I had a hit with, with Henry called I Should Have Loved You, kind of a dance thing. Huh? And then I said, Henry, why don't you let me produce four songs for Stacy? You know, and right. if you like it, then I can finish the album. And if you don't like it, you haven't lost much. And he said, you're on. So then I came back with a, with a fever to do Let It Be Your Angel, Dynamite Jump to the Beat. And then Henry found the song uh -huh. Miracle. And Stacy <laughs> just sang her heart out on your song Miracle. Uh, we can make miracles together. Uh, we're supernatural tonight. We're supernatural tonight. That's right. <laughs> Realize that. All you I knew, I found a miracle in you. you right. Listen, you have you you know you are responsible for my first hit in this business, and you are responsible for the biggest hit in this business. <laughs> and, and so, I'm, so I'm, I'm sorry for being corny, but for me, you are my angel, and oh, uh, and you. you know whatever it was, even without knowing each other, yeah, yeah. and just think songs and the way you connected with my songs. I mean, the other beautiful song you did with Natalie Cole and Freddie Jackson, I Do, you know, which ended up being a big wedding song for me, as you can imagine. Yes. I don't know if you saw it that way when you were producing it, but uh, uh, you, just beautiful, beautiful work and uh, it's fantastic. So you, you are my angel. <laughs> I want to say about the song I Do, recorded in this room again, that Freddie Jackson got here first before Natalie arrived. And Freddie right. Jackson was my first time working with him. And I didn't realize how genius he is and was. That he could come in here on that song, I Do. I think he did no more than three or four takes because it was just awesome. There was nothing yeah. wrong with any of it. And I said, well, guess what? You're done. I'm going to comp it together, uh -huh. but, but you've given me everything I need in these few takes. It was just flawless. And I just couldn't believe how... The, the control he had was perfect. So uh, when, Natalie, when Natalie walked in the door, I said, Freddie's done. <laughs> How, he's done. And it's only been an hour and a half. As he's done. She said, oh, right. my God. So then we got Natalie all, you know, headphones and all that. Then she began to work. But she was surprised that he was done that quickly. But it really was. And then well, Natalie and I became close friends after that session. It's funny because I, I, I've seen Freddie over the years, the skinny version of Freddie, because he's, he's in New York at Broadway a lot. He's at a lot of opening nights at Broadway. And Natalie, what a character she is anyway. Right. As you know, I did the music for the Goodwill Games in 1998, and she hosted them uh, with BB and CC Winans. So I wrote you know, material for them for that. And what, all I can tell you is she's the character. She was a demon. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. So beautiful. So beautiful, man. Great singer. Yes. Oh, I can't wait to have dinner with you. <laughs> okay. So are you going to be in New York this whole time? Is that, is that your, your landing place? I, I have a horse farm here in New York, but upstate. But I live mostly in Hawaii, in Waikiki. Okay. And, and I also live in Tokyo. My wife is a very big star in the... Uh, Japan. And so we have a place in Tokyo. But I try to spend as much time as I can in, in Hawaii these days. It's healthier, uh, you know, ever since the COVID thing. I, I went there, I spent some time, and then I said, you know what? The gods are here. They're in the water. It's in the sea. It's in the mountains. I swim every day. I'm just a healthier guy there. And I'm writing more than I've written since in my 30s between all of my shows and uh, and this, uh, this November, I have the premiere of my first full-length classical symphony uh, done by Vienna Symphonic. I'm the first American to have a premiere from the orchestra, from the, the, wow. the Vienna Orchestra. Congrats, Frank. Beautiful. That's November. Um, but it's a good time, you know? It's a great time. And uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering uh, if there's a way for us to spend a little time together. Maybe we can share an adventure somehow. Yes, that's, that's, that's what I want to talk to you about. So thank okay. you for your time on this podcast. Just wanted to kind of introduce our history to people and say thank you to you and, uh, and congrats on your song of Bernadette, which is like 
awesome. The story of Bernadette, it's awesome with Mother Mary and how she appeared for, for Bernadette. And I, I've seen Bernadette lay in state. Her body's still there in, the, in that church not far from, from Lourdes. I went there to see her. I'm telling you, this is, this is an awesome story. It's amazing that you have, are this connected and you actually you know, did that. That's, that's rare. That's, that's interesting. That, that, that means the stars are aligned, yes, you know, and certainly yes, for us. So Frank. I think what's going to happen is maybe you're going to have to find a way for you to produce some of the from this, something like that. Okay, okay. Well, thank you again, Frank. We'll talk back soon. And, all right. And to all of our listeners around the world, we want to really congratulate you, Frank. You're a wonderful composer. And you write songs that touch the heart. I can't tell you the people who know the songs that we've spoken about. They're, they are some of the favorites because they are so heartfelt. In particular, the, oh, the Word of Broken Hearts, Goodbye Whitney. Uh, people who know that song are very taken by that song. So well, God bless you, Stacy. God bless you, Natalie Cole, Freddie Jackson, and on behalf of Whitney. Thank you, and may all your great endeavors be just smashing, and you and I are going to hook up real soon. Thank you, love. It's been a pleasure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Frankie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to our All In Podcast. If you enjoy the show, please follow, like, and subscribe on our socials. YouTube, Official Narda Instagram, Official Narda, one word, and All In with Narda Michael Walden on Apple Music, Spotify, and more. Thank you so very much.